When both families make an agreement, um, the ring ceremony takes place, uh, where both rings are tied to a red ribbon, and then it's cut by the eldest person in the family. So it could be the father or the grandfather. Um, and that ribbon symbolizes that the couple to be bound forever. It's a symbol of eternity. Um, and then the bride and groom to be kissed the hands of the eldest members of the family, and they live, then they begin to talk about the engagement, the henna night, the wedding day, and when they have decided on the date, they begin to talk about arrangements like how and where they will get engaged, what the henna party will look like, and the details about the wedding ceremony. So the talk, you know, the official talks begin. And there's also a custom for the groom's family to ask the bride's family what is required in terms of how much money they must give the bride or how much jewelry they must buy the bride. So, after the agreement, the bride's side of the family begins to prepare for the engagement. So in Turkey, the engagement party is uh, usually taken care of by the woman's side, so the bride's side. Um, and the engagement itself it can either be, you know, as extravagant as somewhere in a, at a, you know, a party center or a big place at a hotel, or it could be more of a small gathering at the bride's home. So it sort of depends on how much you want to spend money. And on the, on the engagement day, members of each of the family and friends of the couple go to the arranged place for the engagement. Um, the groom's family is responsible for buying the gold and the jewelry and the bride's dress. So although the you know, the, the girl side of the family is arranging everything and, you know, the place and the party. The groom side is still responsible for buying all the jewelry and the, uh, the gold and the girl's dress. And close relatives such as aunts, uncles, will also come and give gold um, as appropriate, as a gift. And in addition to this, the groom's family and the bride's family buys presents to each other. So both families will buy each other presents uh, during the engagement. And it's also traditional uh, that if the engagement takes place at the bride's home, that you know after the engagement party, the couple goes out and everybody uh, goes with them. Okay, so after the engagement is, is done, it's now the groom's side of the family to start preparing for the wedding. And in Turkey, the wedding is all covered by the groom's side. So first they start looking at different venues. So some people prefer inside, some people prefer outside. Uh, if most people are getting married in the summer, they'll probably prefer something like the first photograph. As you know, Turkey is covered by um, water on all three sides, so it's a very nice peninsula. There's beautiful places with beautiful views, so a lot of people will prepare something, prefer something that's close to the water. Um, and then the groom's family will start to send out the invitations. And in Turkey, it's actually quite normal to invite as many people as 300 to 900 people to one's wedding. So weddings are big, and everybody's invited to the wedding. Friends, family, relatives, neighbors, everyone. And once the family orders, and, and then afterwards, the family orders the wedding favors, which is also a big part of the wedding. And so that's one of their part of their to-do list. And then afterwards, uh, the brides go shopping with the groom's family and looking for her wedding dress and jewelry. Um, and of course, the groom's side pays for everything. Um, the groom then goes shopping with the bride's family and to buy his nice suit. Um, and whatever he buys, uh, whatever the guy buys as for suit, the girl side pays for his suit. Um, and of course, not last but not least, they must find a photographer to capture this beautiful day. So it's part of their to-do list. And as you know, gold is very important in the Turkish culture, so when you go to a wedding, you usually give gold or money as a 